Okay, so um, just picking up where we left off and maybe go back just to backtrack a little bit on the uh, video. Anything you'd like to add before? I no, I, I, this is fun. I'm enjoying this. It's like it's a bit schizophrenic, schizophrenic, isn't it? Seem there's times when you said something, and I'm not sure which of you was saying it the you in the past or the you in the present. That's a bit sort of freaky. Here we go. Okay, so I could take this back a little bit. Okay, so we overlap. Okay, here we go. How do I close the gap? Right. You, you close the gap metaphorically by stepping across. It's, it's, there's nothing you can do to close it. You just um, step across. Yeah. Oh. I think that's where we ended in part one. Okay. So I'll let it play now on a bit. I think it's fine. You know, we're just a quick comment that, you know, how do you close the gap? And it, you know, there were two things. One is the, the metaphor. What's that? I just paused the video itself. Yeah. So how do we close okay. the gap? Yeah. So when it, my comment, you know, metaphorically speaking, was simply a way of saying that that you know it's like our map of the world. It's the it's the way in which we represent things, and that, that and then the second piece was you step across, and the stepping across is is another way of saying associate into um, the other side of that. Yes, I mean. Basically, it's just do it, isn't it? I suppose it's the simplest. Yeah, exactly. No, I mean, exactly. Just do it. The simplest underlying messages in coaching are either stop it or do it. <laughs> right. Yeah, and then one of the challenges, you know, for somebody being coach is, do they know how to do it? You know, at that, you know, or do they trust their unconscious can do it? And I would say one of the skills that develops over time is that that people actually do trust their unconscious that when when they hear the instruction either from the self or from their coach just do it they trust their unconscious to be able to just do it and it's in that moment it's what i call a being level decision it's just there's no doing to it it's just be it you know so it's be it now as opposed to do it now yes yeah so that's a very significant piece okay i'll play it on a bit more Okay. So many distractions come in when I think about it stepping across. It's like, I think that the way the boot is for me to, as I uh, step into the moments when I've just, yeah, that's when I've just totally expressed the truth of myself, whatever. Um, that's independent of anything. That's right. And so that's that's what you're asking yourself to do now is express this truth. Express this truth. And the truth is that you love yourself for who you are, not for your body, not for your life lived in that body. Yes. And but you are eternal spirit. And I, I do love my humor about life. Yeah. So that's 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 very much a part of who I am. And that's part of, that is me speaking my truth. Yeah, right. Yes. Uh, 
that's that's expanding That's totally egotistical, I think. Well, what will I look like? (laughs) 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 God, I do get exposed. Consider that you don't smell good. You don't mistake. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Come on, come on. Okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. I shouldn't have said that. Oh, I said it. <laughs> okay. And I can think of people who have that. Which yeah, is and I've admired them without being conscious of that. Actually, right. that's the evidence that you have it, and so now it's just owning it. Yes. Let's stop it there. Just pause. <laughs> so, <laughs> I think we're both laughing at the laughing. It's very, right. very meta. <laughs> oh, truly meta. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yes. So I'd be curious what you were what you were experiencing there is you particularly when you got to the smell, you know. Well, I had that was one of the exemplars of somebody who was the oldest person I've ever met came to mind. And it was quite a joke with us, you know, afterwards that he smelled like a very old person. Right. <laughs> so, so that it, it all came from that image of so he was one of the exemplars i don't think i thought about him in that moment like that but that's where that that came from right and the humor about that yeah well you know i think that's a good distinction when people can laugh at when we can laugh at ourselves we know that we we have been healed in a very significant way yes so that you know for for people who are early on the journey you know that's that's worth paying attention to absolutely when you, when you can laugh at yourself um you have clearly moved pretty significantly um, and I, I noticed like when you laughed as well you know with me that that's very characteristic of these times too right that there's this mutual kind of really quite extreme laughter right yeah, yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? I mean, in a, in a way, that's the best of of kind of these kinds of interactions is that we do it together. Yes. Yeah. You know, one of the one of the structural pieces in here is which I I'm, I reiterated here. I started in in the first um, part that where we did we talked about it a bit, but that was. Um, using what you brought up as, if you will, objections. So, you know, for example, what will I look like or what will I smell like? And just inviting you to step into that. Yes. Um, and I think go. That's another thing is that you, nothing gets by you. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so I think, I still, still, if you like, think that I still say these things I think oh I'm just throwing that out there as humor but it doesn't get by you you know it's like you you pick up nothing goes unnoticed right yeah nothing everything gets and and in some ways the kind of light-hearted throwaways are the things that actually contain most stuff and those are the things to really pick up on that's right yeah and the other the other piece of it too is is this I think fairly unique um, integration, which is uh, being able to love yourself when you don't look the way you want to look, when you're not physically fit the way you are now, when you smell, you know all those things that would cause you to turn away. 
and still love yourself? That answers that question that you had earlier about who am I when I'm in decline? Yeah. Yes. It's interesting because one of the um, a, a quote that really captured an important state for some of the group that I'm with at the moment was that um, thinking that it's okay to be not okay. Yeah. Yeah. Which really kind of gave permission. Yeah. And that, that's a multi-level piece too, right? So being not okay, but being okay with that, being okay with that is the meta position to not being okay. Yes. And it's the more powerful position. Absolutely. Yes. It's like yeah. whatever it is, is. Yeah. To be okay. Right. Not just to be okay with that, but to love that, to love one's. Yes. Which is the evidence of loving yourself yeah. now. And it's interesting to because it's a challenge to love yourself, not because you're physically fit, but because you are who you are. Yes. With whatever you are and whatever right. you're experiencing. That's, a, That's right. Yeah. Okay. Shall okay. I? Yep. That's yep. So now I've got, you know, sort of, um, people coming to mind who have that, that I've admired having that. And I, I've been in kind of, kind of awe of them. Yeah, right. Now you can be in awe of yourself. Let's pause that. Pause it there. Think about this. That's an I think that's a, I just want to mark that out very quickly. Um, you're in, you have identified people in this piece of work, you've identified people that you're in awe of and using the principle of identification, what that means is that you can then be in awe of yourself. And that's, that is a, an identity statement about yourself. Um, but most people would not make that, that leap, that connection. No. And that's a very, it's a, I'd be interested in your response to it because I think that's a very challenging um, identity to go, gosh, I'm in awe of myself. And how do I be humble and be in awe of myself at the same time? Yeah. Which of course is possible. Um, but that, what was your experience? Oh, well, this meta experience, first of all, was that, um, I mean, that, you know, if you've, we recognize the structure in other people that we have within ourselves. So it's one of the presuppositions. And all that we're doing in this, it's like, an, it's like a condensed you know, NLP training. We're just using all the stuff very fast. Right. You know, like yep. drawing on that belief of excellence, um, identifying the distinctions between incongruent and congruent state, picking up words, following them through, chunking up the logical levels. So it's like these things are happening very fast, very quickly, because right. we've done them for such a long time now. Right. Um, that was what I was thinking just as a meta level, like, yeah, because, you know, I've explored that in many ways with you that, yeah, what I recognize in other people is true about myself and taught it. And so that's, it's a given. Right. Right. And so it just gets activated in the moment. And I was just thinking about your question, how to be in awe of yourself and be humble at the same time. Um, cause I wasn't asking that question of myself at the time. Um, so I was, I was, I was in, I'd engaged with that question, how to be that. I think that, um, I think it's, it's what I, you, or we do with that is that's important. Um, so to recognize the, the 
the influence that we have. Um, but and to use it for a purpose. Right. That's right. the key, I believe. Yeah. So it's it's not well, you know, it's like the it's like the expression is that our gifts are not ours to deny. Then, right. Um, yeah. <clears throat> part of it is just operating to full yeah oh, it's recognizing full self and mm. and yeah. drawing on that rather than hiding away right right yeah and i think the the visual expression of it is that is is a demonstration of going beyond self-interest so yes. this is not pat, yeah. patting myself on the back or <clears throat> saying look at me or any of that it's simply being in reality, how am I worthy of all from myself, but also from others because of how I show up? And, the, and because of, of the identification principle, we know, I mean, the humility piece for me is we know that if someone's in awe of us, that's not just us, that's also they're talking about themselves. Really? And so going beyond self interest is we don't just, oh, aren't I great? It's, you know. I'm in awe of myself, and guess what? I use that to help that other person be in awe of themselves. Yes, yes, and we use it for a bigger, yeah. a bigger reason. Yeah. Yes, exactly, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Shall I? Yep. Yep. Incredible state to be in. You're older, much older. You smell, you are not attractive, and you're in awe of yourself. Right. Yeah. yeah. Didn't expect the conversation to go to this place, Gene. <laughs> That's what you asked for. He said, how are we going to end? And I'm talked about not knowing how things are going to unfold. <laughs> you're how. Didn't expect it to unfold this way. Right. Yes. Because this is an example. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Absolutely. It's, uh, yeah, I, I mean, I have the, you know, the amusement of being where I am with this truth. <laughs> right. Yeah, you've entered the circle of those people who inspire awe in others because of their presence. You came, you, something you said years ago came to mind when you said um, you wanted to be able to just walk into a room and make a difference. Yeah. And I've thought about that a lot. Yeah, I get that. Yeah. It's, it's about presence. Yeah. I get that. Have you owned that you stepped in? Yeah. Okay. No. That's the short path. That was a key piece. I remember you saying that and what I thought then. Mm. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Let's pause it. Pause it there. You know, one of the <clears throat> One of the um, things that pops out to me there is uh, this whole thing about creating a frame of reference. So one of the things that, that I said was that you've entered into a circle of people who inspire awe in others 
And then I extended that to link to what you had said earlier about presence, who inspire awe in others because of their presence, right? So it's like building a representation at the identity level um, based on what that person's giving to you. Yes. Yeah, so you're kind of taking what's coming from me and yeah. remolding that. Yeah. And I, I just to reference earlier on in the session, I referred back to um, that morning, which was at the end of the NLP training that I did with you so many years ago, mm -hmm. when we had this very intense session on the last morning. And it took me like three hours to get to the yes. I think right. it was a pretty <laughs> astonishing time. Like we didn't have a coffee break or anything. And and it, that came to mind because of, and you held that space until I said mm -hmm. yes. Right. Even though it held the whole group you know, for three hours with no break. Um, and the kind of struggle I had then to get to that yes. So that, that, that was in my mind. Right. Also, it was in my mind because I got to a yes, so I knew that I had that. Yeah. Even though it took so long then. Yeah. And you just think about it now. I mean, how quickly do you get to yes now? Yes. And that was that contrast was going. That, that was what I was referring to then. That was such yeah. that was such a memorable time. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting. Um, I think it's, uh, you know, there is actually a book called Getting to Yes, which is a negotiating book. Yes. And I read it many years ago, and I thought, gosh, this is a long process. And how will I ever be able to do this? Because I, even then, I was applying stuff to myself and going internal. And my internal process for getting to yes, it's very much like you with the three hours. It was for it seemed like forever yeah. um, but I would just say that it is something worth noting for people who are coaches and who are wanting to grow is to be able to get to a yes internally is such a powerful statement yeah. um, about who you are and about how you show up in the world um, because that filter uh, for ourselves and also for other people is like I can hold the space now like then I can hold the space for people to get to yes, because I know I know what that does when people do get to yes. There's a value in that simple, simple, not always easy. The value of it is enormous um, in saying yes. I think what's so unusual in that is that um, to do that, you were and you are prepared to let go of time. Right and opinion right um an expectation no to totally dedicate yourself to seeing that through yeah 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 i think that there's an energetic exchange that happens uh, when i'm in that state when the other person's moving into that state of yes I think there's an energetic exchange in which the message is, as you're saying, you know, I'm holding this space until, <laughs> you know, and then, and then there's a kind of a pressure that comes on the person to go, you know, there is a, there, there is a, you know, it's almost like a, a, a well, I call it energetic, an energetic message that this is so worth doing that I'm going to put pressure on you. Um, and if you say no, I'll go with the no. But until you say no, I'm not going to give up. Yeah. And when you think about that, it, you know, that time when, I, when it took so long, it was the last morning of the two years of training when right. the expectation would be that we'd say, what a great program it had been and thank you very much. And, and, and that would have been trivial in comparison and to be prepared to um do this which was a bigger statement about what all the learning had been about right um and yet totally unexpected totally against you know the norm 
uh, yeah. for programs, for example. Yeah. Um, and there's something very significant in that is being prepared to do something that is so right in the moment that all the kind of the norms, the procedures and as go, you're operating, at, you're doing the same thing, but it's such a big, a profound level. Right. Yeah, that's right. And I think that's what we have to offer. I mean, collectively, we can bring that. Um, yeah, I think about it in terms of, of even and more broadly than training programs, but you know, who we are in, in society and stuff and, and yeah. what's our voice and how do we make that voice known? And, yes. and yeah, and for me right now, it's a, you know, it's one of my um, challenges just in the riots that we have in the US. Um, you know, I kind of, I, I know, I know my internal, but knowing how to express that and where to express that and, and how to, how to articulate it is, um, that's an ongoing journey. Yes, and I, that's what I would wish for anybody going through this, is to right. be exploring that and finding where to find their voice to, yeah. to address the things that are happening. Yeah. And, you know, for me, the starting point, it, not for everybody, but certainly for me, the starting point is, is internal. It's getting it right on the inside and, and opening, being open enough to respond to what's happening, but also being open enough to, like you, with denial and defense and all that, and say, yeah, I'm going to release that. I'm going to say, I'm going to explore without judgment and without, without self-judgment for example, and without taking on judgment of others. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's a really important. I think the other piece that comes to mind is about letting go of ego. Uh-huh, yeah. Right, that's exactly right. Yeah. Yeah, and the other thing I would say is, you know, we talked about, we talked about the long path and short path. I think that this is, there is a short path. You know, and once we once we kind of get on it, it, it this work can go very quickly. Yes. Um, yeah. So that investment in learning the stuff in the first place. It, oh, exactly. Eventually, it just you just do it. You just do it. That's right. And it just because again, it becomes a way of being. Um, you know, and it, you don't have to consciously process it all. I mean, there's some things like even this, these videos that we're doing, we're consciously processing what. Yes, but all that happens in a split second uh, for us when we're actually in the moment. So, I mean, this is us modeling us in order to share what's going on under the surface. That's right. That's right. So should I go back to the? Yeah. yeah. Okay, it's only last. Mm. Yeah, we can just finish off. I think. That close. Yeah. It's a close and it's a beginning. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. I'm just reflecting that these are the kinds of spaces that we're being offered um, in this time. Yeah. Yeah, thank you for the initiation. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Your till next till next time, it's your turn. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes, good. It'll come back and get you. Of course it will. That's the beauty of it. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's very, it's a very warm feeling I have. You know. You know, because it actually for us to be able to take the time to reflect 
on, and that's just a 16 minute little piece, but, but it, it is so much more than 16 minutes. It's right. You know, it's years, right? Yes. And many of those years are kind of coming to mind as we do that. Yeah. Like moments from those years. Yeah. yeah. So it's like, it's, um, you know, it's like a going back on the timeline as well. Sort of going, whoa, yeah, there was that. There was that time when we were parked at the top of Winter Hill overlooking Marlow. And I remember you giving one of those identity statements. And there was that time at the end of the program. Many, many times like that. Right. Right. Yeah. I, I mean, one of the ones that comes to my mind is we're sitting in front of the tithe barn before a, um, a program when you made the decision to go global. Yes. If you remember that, but yeah. Yes. And the whole representation of me and the world just changed. Just yeah. the representation of the world changed. Talk about submodality change was huge. Right. Right. Yeah. And and yeah, I, I remember a time when somebody challenged you to not know. <laughs> <laughs> And then having challenged, having challenged you, they didn't like what they got. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly right. Be careful what you ask for. <laughs> He's like, no, I didn't want this. <laughs> oh, goodness. Oh, lovely. Oh, yeah, that's a great memory. <laughs> that was really good. Yeah. <laughs> Gosh. That was an amazing stepping across. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you so much. This has uh, been super fun. Absolutely. So thank you, Jean. Yeah. <laughs> Great what right. this whole, you know, confinement and the use of technology and what that's opened up now is what's possible. Uh, fantastic. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Right. Really cool. I'll speak to okay. you soon. Thank Great. you. Look Thanks. Bye-bye.